Hey everybody, this is Michael Goldberg and welcome to the Job Seeker Journeys US broadcast. Uh, I am so excited this week. Uh, one of my favorite people who I was introduced to through my friend Jed Gifford, fan Sean Henneberger. Hello and good afternoon. Hello, how are you today? I am fantastic. Keeping busy, making making things happen, and just lots going on. Lots going on. But the the you know today we're I'm going to set that aside. We're going to focus on. Uh, Focus on you and see what we can do to draw some attention. So if you recruiters out there watching, happen to be catching the broadcast, uh, you need to be paying attention to Fashion because she is a learning and development guru, but she's a leader. So she's really cool. That makes her really cool when she's a leader, right? Isn't that the, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't try. Isn't that the way it works? <laughs> Um, so why don't we start by, uh, uh, by telling, uh, everyone a little bit about yourself, what you, what you have done and what you're looking for. Wow. Okay. So I'm, as you said, I'm in talent development. I've got more than 15 years experience in that field through retail, automotive, and also through professional writing. Um, some of my key skills include onboarding, project management, instructional design, a lot of training strategy team building, and then running both remote and on-site teams. And then to top all that off, I'm a pretty savvy business traveler, both domestic and internationally. Um, is, is that for business or for pleasure? Uh, business and pleasure, both. So it, it goes both ways. Yes, I've, I've traveled. I used to, um, in my early career, I did international trade shows. So I traveled throughout the world uh, doing trade shows for different industries. Got it. So who are some of the companies that you've worked for in the past? Well, my uh, in the United States, I worked for Modco Pneumatic Conveying Company, which is mineral processing and, in and engineering. Mm -hmm. I did uh, work for the Container Store, which is my retail segment. And most recently, I worked with Park Place Dealerships as a instructional designer. That's awesome. So you know how to instructionally design a Mercedes-Benz or a Lexus? <laughs> I know how to leverage their training and build it into my strategy. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. I love it. I love it. So what was it like to work for Park Place? Did you enjoy it over there? I did. It was a really unique environment, and I learned a lot. They have some tremendous people over there that are very open to sharing their knowledge and information because automotive was new for me. I was only there for two years prior to the COVID uh, event. But um, I just I learned a lot working within fixed operations with variable operations uh, really was part of a high impact team of six people that included performance analysts as well as regional trainers. So it was a it was a really neat experience. And I was able to spearhead an onboarding project over there while I was doing that. And then we were also uh, prior to the COVID event, we were really looking hard at the fixed operations side of the business and finding out where people's stopping point was when they weren't necessarily going to continue with a career. What, what could we do to leverage our highest uh, talent pool? So we were in the middle of that project. Very nice. Very nice. So, you know, uh, you're obviously seeking a new opportunity. How long have you been out on the market? Um, since April 3rd. All right. uh, yeah. Yeah. So, since April 3rd. And so, and, 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 and which is not that long, you know, it's interesting. Yeah. You know, we, uh, but but still, as a job seeker, it's really scary, right? I get it. I completely get it. And uh, and since we've discovered that your passion is craft tabling, whatever is behind that screen of yours, behind the screen, you have some time to do some crafts. But you also, you know, you had to focus your time on your job search, right? And I think you said you were on like six Zoom meetings yesterday. Uh, was were those interviews? What, what were those all about? If you could share. Yes. So I, the, the first thing, when I started my job search, the very first thing I did was I leaned into my network. I've always loved to network and I've always professionally networked. So really talking to folks um, for a couple of things. One was to find out what, um, what's happening in the marketplace right now, what's happening with folks, what are expectations of bringing people back in, what's that going to look like, where am I going to be able to leverage my skill set. The other thing was just to find out how folks are doing, you know, what's how are you feeling? Um, I, I also do, I also help other folks and coach other folks um, that are friends of mine looking to find jobs that just kind of fallen into that talent development realm. 
And so I, I try to introduce them to other people. And so building my network that way. And so it's been a very, very productive uh, time for me to do that. And I, I also belong to the Association for Talent Development. I'm on the board. Um, I'm a member of Dallas HR. And then a professional group that's a learning group that I belong to is a fantastic networking group, which is the First Friday Book with Randy Mayu. And oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a that's learning it's a learning event. But at the same time, you just meet some really fabulous folks. So it's just been it's been neat to lean into my network. Yeah, I went the last time I attended the function was actually before COVID really hit. Uh, and uh, I think it was in February. Uh, was the last mm -hmm. first first uh, first Friday book club. But for those in the DFW Metroplex, this is a great opportunity. Number one, you don't have to read the whole book. Why? Because the guy gives you a whole dang synopsis right then and there. And he really reads some incredible books. In fact, they review two books a week. So between him and I forget the other gentleman's name, they're reading a just an exorbitant amount of books. But I think it also says something really good for those that are in job search or even if you are working, that you should be trying to read at least one. I know CEOs read at least one or two books a week, business books a week, mm -hmm. right? Uh, not Barbara Cartland or uh, or uh, James Patterson, but they're reading uh, they're reading biographies, autobiographies, business books, and I you know the ones I like to read are the uh, are the biographies. Those are those that's what it's for me because you can learn a lot from what people did in history during during turbulent times mm -hmm. uh, like this so it's it's just amazing so good for you to to to, to spend that time uh doing that do you read a lot or do you find that it's just easy to go to the book club well i do both um yeah. because what i do is i try to use the well i definitely learn every time i go but what i also do is i i use it to see what i want to read more in depth and the other topics are like okay i'm good on that and i can maybe seek something else because um, when you're networking, people share their resources or they share their sort of their secret sauce of what they've been looking at. So you can read those those books and maybe build that up and then take advantage of the summary side so that you can cover more than one topic. It's just a sort of a really effective way to expand your expand your mind. Right. Absolutely. So let's start to hone in on you. Right? Okay. So you tell us you're you you know you you're a learning and development leader. Um, you've done everything soup to nuts, learning and development. So in <laughs> instructional design, face-to-face uh, -face training, online learning, um, you know talent development, talent management, whatever the buzzword is of the day in that area. But when it all boils down to it, what's your what's your superpower that you really believe you can help organizations? My superpower is leveraging my curiosity. Um, Tell us about I'm, that. I'm curious. So in, in the talent development world to be effective, you it really do have to do needs assessments. What is happening? What are the pain points that different executives are experiencing? What do we need to be addressing? And so by being curious, by asking questions, how is this affecting the end user? How is it affecting management? What What is the objective for the company? Um, using that curiosity to find those answers and to really be able to provide a whole picture of the current state of the business or the project or the initiative, the current state, so that executives can get a, a, a really good uh, insight to that and then help them get to the future state. So identify what they want their future state to be and then help them define a strategy to get from A to B. And then what is the timeline for that? What's realistic? It's it just, it's that curiosity is... Um, is the fun part. And so the other part that I leverage my curiosity in is I really like people. Um, and I really had, like helping others succeed. I love knowing their stories. And so by doing that, I'm ever to able to really leverage uh, different people's talents and to build diverse teams. And when you build a team with a lot of thought diversity, you can really affect positive change and you can really deliver ROI. So I just, I say curiosity is definitely my superpower. I'm, I'm just curious. Hi. <laughs> Would you like to know that you you have a fan? Uh, you have a fan. You ready? I do. Okay. All right. Look at this comment. Look on the screen from your friend Karen Alvarez. I can attest that Fanchon is everything she shared and more. How about Hi, Karen. That? Hey, Karen. <laughs> Thanks for commenting. And that and that's what the power of this platform is all about: is giving people the props and the kudos they deserve. And 
you know, uh, you know, and I'm looking forward to, to working with you and getting to know you better uh, as we uh, build out your career path. And um, uh, so it's good to know that you've got people like Karen cheerleading ready to go. And I think it says a lot. So if anybody else knows Fanshawn, I want you to sing your praises on the platform you're watching <laughs> from and we're going to put it out there. All right. So thank you, Karen, for, uh, yes, for thank you, for, Karen, for who, by the uh, way, is quite dynamic in her own right. She's, she's quite a, a stellar individual. So excellent. Excellent. All right. So, um, you know, you had mentioned that you are, you've been a leader, you've been an instructional designer, What's the right position that you really, really want to land in your next opportunity? Well, it's twofold. So I could go um, stay in the talent development field, definitely have that passion. Just, just, I think always will. It's sort of in my blood. But the other thing that I've really been leveraging in the last few years is internal communications and employee engagement, really um, engaging those end users. How do we communicate? What are the strategies? How do we measure that? Um, you know, determining that that data and that impact. Are they are they happy with where they're at? Are, is management doing what it needs to do? How can we flip that around? So I would say two different two different areas that I'm really looking at: internal communications and then the talent development. Nice. So now, do you have experience in the internal communications? Because normally it's a little bit of a different skill set. Um, so wh where have you done that before? So internal communications was definitely part of my job at the container store. Uh, the, the one, the neatest thing about the approach that uh, was used back when I was, was working in retail, it was who needs to know and who would benefit from knowing. So it's creating strategies around anything from training to product launches, to testing the water and doing engagement surveys and finding out how do you, how are your people feeling? What do they want to know more about? And then being able to leverage that information and turn it and, you know, let management you know, work with it, being able to leverage it within the training realm, even within the, like the recruiting realm, uh, working with recruiting to making sure that we're finding the right people for the right seats. So internal communications is one of those things that sort of touches everything. And it's, um, it's just really neat. And then with regards to my experience at Park Place, I did a lot of editing and writing on uh, benefits. Uh, when the benefits years and the enrollments came around, helping them really edit out their materials, leverage that, and then also working um, with the leadership development programs, working that communication strategy for uh, for leadership development. And then at the time, Asbury Automotive was purchasing Park Place and COVID put a halt to that. But um, really also helping with the communication and change management for the teams going into that acquisition. Absolutely. So, um all right, so that makes sense. So it's really internal communications, but more from the HR side, or do you want to do overall internal communications like when COVID rears its ugly head, now that it is rearing its ugly head again, or you know, there's a launch of a new campaign of some sort, is that what you want? Or is it more employee engagement surveys, um, uh, you, know, you know, dealing with, more HR and learning and development related issues. Help me understand that. So I would say it's probably going to be have a lean towards HR. Ironically, um, the, the one company that I have the most experience with this in is really is the container store and we didn't have an HR team. So we did those things. So I'm going to say it leans more towards the HR side, but it's really leveraging the information and the communication for it could be product training, sales training, are your benefits you know, ben educating about benefits when they come around, compliance, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I, was a, I was the director of training for new stores. And so compliance was a big deal because we would go into new markets, new builds. We had to make sure that everything was up to standards with regards to safety, certificates of occupancy, all that stuff. So it's, it's sort of a hodgepodge. I think it falls with, with what I've experienced in my job search as I've networked and I've had, I've had conversations with different folks. I would say it probably falls closer to the HR realm. But if a, a good internal communication strategist is going to work with marketing and external communications as well, because it's all about the branding. Got it. Got it. All right. So, you know, you kind of alluded to this already, but when you started your job search, so Park Park Place comes to you, right? Park Place comes to you and says, we got to cut your position. Sales are down, blah, 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 blah. 
Mm-hmm. What's what's going through your mind day one, day two, day three? <clears throat> I think, well, I wasn't surprised. Um, you know, just you could, if you, you know, I, I, again, re- always being tuned into my network, I wasn't too surprised as to what was coming. I think my biggest thing was, is my team okay? Um, you know, making sure that they were okay. That was sort of my very first thing, is my team okay? And then I did a lot of walking, um, allowing myself to step back and process. I, uh, I would say it wasn't even as in any single thought with regards to me. It was just, okay, new chapter. Here we go. Before you strategize, take a deep breath, take a step back and let's go walk. And that's one of my, one of my releases. So I just would walk and, you know, bless my husband's heart. He listened. <laughs> I just talk, 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 talk. <laughs> If he needs to call me, he can, you know, he can just call me on the <laughs> side. Oh my God, help her. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it was it was just really kind of doing that. And then um, I pretty quickly decided that I wanted to um, to inter- interview different folks to maybe help me build a career strategy. Um, I take care of others that I needed somebody that would have that 360 view of me to take a look and um, and help me build it and develop a career strategy. And then also help me to identify what are my transferable strengths? What you know, the market's not going to be the same. Um, as awful as the COVID event is, it's exciting to see what's going to be happening in our new in our new job world. Technology is going to come in. Um, people aren't going to retire. And so you're going to have these two age groups um, that are going to be into the marketplace. So how do we get them to cross mentor? What, what's that going to look like? So there's, I think there's some exciting opportunities. And so it's just staying positive with all of that. I love that. Number one, I love how the first thing your, your mind didn't go to yourself, which speaks volumes. Your mind went to the people that reported into you like, well, what about them? You know, how can I take, how can I take care of them? Um, I, I love that. <clears throat> and that shows that you're an amazing manager and that you genuinely care about taking care of the people that help take care of you, right? Um, number two, it's good to have an outlet. So I like to swim. Uh, you like to walk. I like to walk when it, back in April, March, April, it was still fine to walk. It wasn't that yeah. <laughs> today's not bad either, but you know, in a couple of days, no walking. No, you know, I just, I I'd go in the pool and swim a hundred laps every day because right. it's what I enjoy doing. Right. Um, you, you, you sought professional help because I think, and I think a lot of people are, are scared to do that. Um, and uh, you know, uh, and I heard the guy you, you hired. He's a he's a he's a pretty okay guy. Yeah, I um, think he's gonna be fine. <laughs> yeah, God, I hope so. <laughs> it's me, people. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Um, uh, but no, seriously, um, I think you have a lot of amazing skills. That when we do start working together, we start tomorrow on those transferable skills. I think there's a lot to be said, and I think that you have uh, more and more companies. You know, a lot of people look to their CHROs, SPPs of HR, uh, to the companies that hire internal comms within HR, kudos to them. And I know that's been around for a little bit, but it's still not prevalent, right? Still a lot of people uh, are relying on their 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 heads of HR and some are, as, you know, the highest position they hold as a director of HR has never had to put out a communication. Uh, unless there's some type of communications major or English major, really know how to fine tune words to, you know, ensure people are understanding the messages of why we're doing this, how we're going to do this and how it's going to benefit you. Right. So those are the three key things in any type of uh, comms position. So, um, so I even, you know, I even could see you if you're good at that, you could, you could certainly create a side hustle on the on that uh, helping other CHROs develop those skills and talents. So look, I'm throwing ideas at you, which is good. Yeah, right? There you go. Right. Hey, I love it. Yeah, I love it. I, I love to write and I like telling people stories and I like getting the information out there in a concise way that doesn't put people to sleep. That's, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, but that's, you know, a lot of folks, I mean, I love to talk, but when you when you're doing written word, be it on social media, be it through email blast, be it through any corporate communication, you know, short and sweet to the point. Let's just let's get that information out there, you know, sound bite. No, no doubt. And so we got just want to stop down for a little uh, some shout outs of people that are tuning in and saying uh, hello. Uh, have you met 
Chuck Vanderweel. Do you know him? The name sounds familiar. Yes. He's, he's good people to know. He 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 uh, is with the Business Technology Networking Group, which is part of the association. Chuck, you're going to kill me. Association of Business Technology Professionals (ABTP). A lot of acronyms, um, and uh, uh, mostly focused on the technology sector. So, hello, mm -hmm. Chuck. Uh, Mac Vassal, who we had on, uh, or Mahek, sorry, who we had on last week. We actually did a really good show last week with her and two other students. She's graduating from school. Uh, she's on the F1 visa, so she needs to find work. And we had her along with uh, Vaibhiv and Pratik uh, as yeah. well. They, they all attend Northwest, Northeastern University, uh, and some are, some are working, some aren't. And uh, uh, we even had a uh, uh, an immigration attorney on answering their questions. So uh, Naomi Pearson, who was wonderful. So Mike, thanks for joining. Larry Pearson, good to see your good to see your face uh, again. Uh, she's seeking a remote position for recruiting, TA management, or client delivery. Uh, Mike is looking for project manager, business analyst, business analyst, or project coordinator role. Uh, and Chuck has corrected me, Association, oh, I got it right, Association for Business Technology Professionals, ABTP. Yes, and he's now giving me kudos for remembering what BTN is. <laughs> Thanks, Chuck. So, no, Chuck's good people. So, uh, for all you technology people watching, if you want to become a group, whether you're in Dallas or not, uh, they hold a lot of virtual meetings, you should totally do it. All right. So thanks, everyone, for your comments. I, I appreciate you you sharing that. Um, so let's go back to Michelle. Um So what are some of the techniques or hacks that you're that you're working with to build your network out that are currently working that you can share with the audience here? Well, I don't know that my hacks are particularly original. Um, I would say it have my, to be. it's working. It's what's, what's working. working right? Yes. Yeah. So um, I am a big fan of the gentleman that created bullet journaling because he, he was a very, very, he is a very, very smart man who uh, pretty much said, all right, world, I need digital and analog. So my hack is really using technology in terms of, um, you know, just simple things, my outlet calendar to a maintaining a spreadsheet of who I talk to, and then down to creating a analog version of my to-do list in a bullet format that allows me to just kind of understand my progression throughout the day and really create that schedule for myself. I would say that's my biggest one is making sure I have a schedule um, and that keeps me honest and keeps me moving forward. And then my career coaching strategy, wanting to work with somebody, I'd say that's my other hack, you know, working with a career coach and then network and network, network. And when you think you can't do it anymore, network some more. Um, you never know who you know. And it's been really fun as I've um, worked with different folks um, and known different folks, just introducing them to each other and what that leads to and what that expands in terms of, of who you can talk to. So it's been, those, those would be my hacks. Um, yeah, just create that routine, do what works for you, and then go for it. I think that's great. I think staying organized, and that's going to be a big part of this uh, Job Secure Hotline show that we do. We're talking about staying organized uh, tomorrow. Uh, it's a four o'clock show. You can look it up on the events on LinkedIn. But um I think having a log, having that, show us that book again. Show us your little, how do you? <laughs> My book? Yeah. Lord, so it's like you went back old school to like Daytimer, Franklin Covey, that kind of stuff, right? Sort of, yes, but with a, but very much with the bullet journal approach where, and so the bullet journal approach is very, it's very concise. There's, it's not a lot. It's, it's creating a, uh, a to-do list that doesn't, it complements your, your technology that you use. Mm -hmm. So it's complementing my Excel spreadsheet and my um, my, my online calendars because I use that, you know, I'm connected wherever I go. But then that it just, um, I think introducing that analog element allows my brain to slow down a little bit. And so it, it, it generates thought processing and I can I can sort of mind meister from there. I kind of like that. So where can people, like, who is this per this book you read? Like, do you want to share that with people? And I can post it in oh, the comments. Oh, um, I need to look up the, the gentleman. It's, it's bullet journaling. I think his first name is Ryder. I need to go look. Um, I had, I followed him for quite some time, uh, when during my career at Park Place and he, he, uh, posts on his blog. He has different hacks for using bullet journaling and how to, to leverage it. All right. So I want my audience who's watching to go look up bullet journaling and then share the author so we can, and put, put the title of the book 
and the author's name in the comments below, please. So that would be fantastic. So, um, all right. Well, I think that's fantastic. Now, and I think it's good. Now, do you set goals for yourself every day so that at the end of the day, you can look back and say, okay, hey, you know, I reached out to 15 people. I had 10 conversations, you know, things like that. Do you, do you set daily goals for yourself? I do. Um, if I don't, I tend to start chasing squirrels. Um, you know, it's like, oh, that would be interesting to research or, oh, let me, let me go look at that. So um, I very During much- the life of every HR professional. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I very much say, okay, I'm going to talk to these folks today. I make sure I get things scheduled on my calendar. Um, I also uh, task myself in terms of looking at the job boards, uh, you know, going through those, looking at that, saving that, looking at the skills. Um, cause I think that's also another step when you're, when you're out and you're thinking, Hmm, okay, I'm in transition. How do you upskill? What skills should I add that I don't have? Or, you know, so it's, it's looking at those things too. So it's, if you stay onto a schedule, it provides time for that creative thinking. So when it comes to unique job search techniques, so along with this bulleting and journaling, Anything that's worked for you that you'd like to share with the audience? Uh, I don't know that I've been as successful as I would like to be, to be very honest. I think, but I think part of that's just the environment. Um, that's you know part of the reason I'm working with you to help develop a career strategy is to, to get that focus in and to also get somebody that looks at you in a different way. Just, you know, it's like the, the people that were on my team that I've helped through some of their journey and their search, I'm, I'm, a, I'm more objective. So I would say... Find somebody that can be objective about you um, would be my would be my my tip and trick for success. You need that 360 you need that 360 uh, perspective to be able to move forward in a way that that you can be honest with yourself, but that you can also showcase and highlight the skill set that you bring. Yeah, so Chuck puts it puts it pretty bluntly right here. Reinvent yourself. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> right. And, and, but that's what you're almost trying to do, right? I mean, mm-hmm. with this internal communications opportunity, now obviously you can go back in L and D. You have that as your as your fallback. But who knows? Maybe you could work with a smaller company that would engage both sides of your passions, i.e. internal comms and uh, learning and development to help. That would you be like a dream, succeed. right? <laughs> right. So, I mean, that's, that, that's, that's super important. So, um, so, you know, if you have, if you, if you have questions for myself or even Fanchon, uh, feel free to ask away in the comments below. We'll, we'll put it up there and, uh, try to, try to help you there. So, you know, here, here's, here's, here's some of the thing here, you know, one of the things we, we try to stay away from as much as possible on the show is frustrations, but I think it's important to talk about. So what are some of the frustrations that you're running into, um, uh, and, or you've gone through and how did you overcome it yourself? Or do you feel like you still need help in overcoming that? I think the the biggest frustration I'm going to say that I, that I felt is probably pretty common to a lot of job searchers and that's, that's getting overwhelmed. I mean, you pretty much start getting infodemia and you get zoom exhaustion, you know, you, right. you've talked and talked and talked and talked and you come off that those calls at six o'clock at night and you're like, Okay, you know, it's, it's, uh, so I would say that feeling of getting overwhelmed by it all every now and then. And so the way that I deal with that really is literally simple, just giving yourself permission to step away, permission to turn off that computer, turn your phone face screen down, um, you know, watch a, watch a silly movie that takes it away, or maybe some people like drama. I'm, I'm not a, I, I don't like, I don't need any more angst at the moment. So I tend towards the Marvel universe right now is, is my friend. Um, but, uh, you know, just uh, I would say that that would be your biggest frustration is being overwhelmed. I've I've done enough research and looking at how you can identify a hiring manager or how you can identify folks. I think that's where the overwhelmed will come in because it's it's uh, like, oh, stars. OK, I've got to work for this. But it's um, but again, take that step back. And then when you do, you can refocus. And if you can't refocus yourself, find that peer, that coach somebody that's going to really allow you to, to get back in line. You know, I think that's important. I think it's, I think it's, uh, it's super important. Um, and so uh, I applaud you for that. And, and that's not even on top of paying the bills. If you have kids, <laughs> taking care of the kids, putting food on the table, getting gas in the car, 
not going outside because you're going to get corona. I'm kidding. You will not get coronavirus if you go outside. But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I think I, you know. So it, it, yeah, I, I, I do like. I think you called it zoomentia, which is like a new term of like too much zoom. Yeah. Uh, so I kind of I kind of like that. Um, but I have to ask you if you were had to be a Marvel character, which one would that be? Oh, Wonder Woman. <laughs> she's a DC pe Marvel people. I know she's DC. Uh, I know, but yeah. Well, actually, I am Groot. I'm going to go to Groot. I am Groot. I think he would. Guardians I would. Of the galaxy, anytime. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. No. Uh, yeah, but Wonder why? Woman definitely. Why I am Groot? Yeah. I like that. Um, just sort of that uh, ability to go out, take care of business, and turn around with a great big smile on your face, and you're still lovable. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and if you really wanted to go deeper into the psyche, I'll put on my psychology major hat. What did what did Groot have over everybody? What was his his superpower? Do I think he just kept it simple. No, I mean I would I would say he kept it simple. I've I've never thought about his particular superpower. I just this I love the I am superpower is, yeah, well if you think about it and just uh, while having watched the movies one and two, I'm so looking forward to three next year. Um, but the, you know, when, 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 not to be a spoiler, but when, when, when Gru was initially destroyed in the first movie, he was able to reinvent himself from a twig mm -hmm. and the twig was able to reform, but he was able to morph and use all of his, all of his skill sets and, Every single part, so from branches to leaves to the stars that he created uh, to different parts of his trunk to get rid of bad guys. Right. And that's what I loved about Groot is he was able to be himself and use everything he had within him. And I think that's the – sometimes that's the issue when we're in a job search or even for a lot of humans just in the normal everyday race. Yep. It's um, – uh, you know, is for us, to, if we could use our brains and use our hearts and our abilities and be confident in those abilities, and I get it during a job search, you don't have much confidence unless you're gaining traction. You can use everything. Now, let's talk Wonder Woman. <laughs> you know, it's like, where did that come from, right? No, no, I get where it comes from. I get where it comes from. I mean, what, what's her name? What the uh, Gadal? What's her first name? I forgot her first name. Oh, um, no, 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 no. Yeah. So, yeah, she was fast and furious. Yeah, fast and yeah. furious to Wonder Woman. Uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so she was amazing because she was able to adapt to the outside world, and she would, and she had all these amazing. But she believed in integrity and truth and doing mm -hmm. the right things, right? So that's part of the 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 formal Justice League. Right back in our days when I was growing up, that's all I'd watch on Saturday morning was Justice League, right? Yeah. Um, uh, and so, uh, but uh, Wonder Woman just she embodies everything I think in a superhero that even Superman or Batman or any of the other characters from Marvel don't have, and that's resilience and determination. And I think it's really cool. So, um, all right, so Chuck already, so Chuck, you know, you're a little late to the show, man. You said, I'd like to know more about Fanchella. Oh, oh he, no, I'm sorry. You're not late to the show on this question. He, he, well, actually, we're not allowed to ask this in the human resources world, but he just, it is, he wanted to know is Fanchella French? Um, uh, yes, actually, my name is Old French, and it's my, my name, legal name is Double Barreled. My name is Fanchon Leah, or Fanchon Leah. Mm -hmm. um, and every, the first girl born in our family is named Fanchon Leah. Um, and then every other generation is called by the middle name. So my grandmother and I go by Fanchon mm -hmm. and my daughter and my mom go by Leah. I love it. Tradition. Mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. you go. Let me just talk to Chuck for a second. Chuck, when you're interviewing <laughs> somebody, you can't ask them, Hey, that's an interesting name. What is that French? That's a no, no. It's a no, no. So there you go. You've had your HR lesson for the day, your interview lesson for the day. So no more. Otherwise, you're good. You're good, man. So we, we appreciate you asking. So, um, all right. So in the, in the few minutes we have left here, Fanshawn, is there any, are, are there any questions uh, from you that I can answer where you're, you know, then I know we're going to start tomorrow, but 
what questions do you have kind of in your mind that you think would be helpful to you and the audience uh, out there? I haven't gotten any questions from the audience yet. I think um, the audience and myself, as, as we're looking, as we're going through our job search and, and the landscape is starting to change a little bit now. So um, things are starting to open up. We have, I, I'm, get, I'm currently filing for unemployment, but now I'm going to have to start in July saying, here's the three jobs I applied for. The integrity side of me is like, okay, but I haven't, you know, vetted the company, done my, done all my homework to get to those three companies. So am I just randomly putting my stuff out there? So I think the question is, how do you balance sort of the needs of what's coming in um, as the landscape's changing in terms of your job search and, and just submitting applications versus being purposeful and going forward? So if I understand the correction, you want to know, since we're being asked to kind of record, how, how do you keep up and document, like, for purposes of record keeping for like the Texas Workforce Commission or just in general, how do you keep it? Well, I think it's Texas Workforce Commission because you, you, you're trying to be purposeful on your, as an individual, you're trying to be purposeful on your side with your search and you're trying to make sure that you reach out and you use and leverage your connections. But if yeah. you have a drier week, it's, you're not going to have three solid blocks of gold, right? So right. then you just randomly apply and put that in the TWC. I mean, it's just, it's well. Here, here's the thing. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to go on record to say randomly apply because uh, they would not appreciate <laughs> that. I don't need them auditing me either, um, or coming after me. But and they wouldn't. But um, you need to look for a job. Now, let's say you have a dry week. Let's say job postings go down. Things start to slow back down a little bit because of COVID. I don't think that they they are going to. But let's just not say it does. Well. Um, I would say apply to apply to positions uh, for which you believe you are qualified for. Mm. Uh, don't go apply to a position that you have no background because then you're just wasting your time. You're uh, by applying and then by logging it with TWC, the Texas Workforce Commission. Um, and, and most workforce commissions are going back to that requirement yep. um, effective July 1st. So, um, so what I would say is apply to jobs that you are legitimately qualified for, um, even if you don't want to work for that organization. It may not be one of your target companies, but who knows if you apply, what if it does become a target company because – Everything you've heard is 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 untrue, and as you do more fact finding, you find out, hey, this is actually kind of a cool company. So I'm glad I did apply. And oh, by the way, I have an interview, and things are rolling along, right? Where they start to ask a lot of questions. That is the the, the state commissions. Is if you turn a job down, that's when they start asking you, well, why did you turn that job down? Mm -hmm. Well, be honest first off, uh, and secondly, um, you know, this if it's not enough money wasn't enough money or um, you can't say, well, it, the, the, ti the, uh, the title wasn't right. Well, you can't use that as an excuse if you applied for the job. You knew what the title was going in. <laughs> now, unless they change the title during the process, say, we're going to make this an individual contributor position and pay $25,000 less, then yes, you have the right to turn that down. And as long as you're logging that, um, uh, do that. But, uh, you know, you can also apply for temporary jobs and contract jobs, full-time jobs and part-time jobs. Each one of those counts as looking for a job. There you go. Yeah, because the contract world is, is interesting. I noticed this last week there was a very definite uptick in contract opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be that way. I think it's going to be that way for a while. I think you're going to see the gig economy for quite some time. While there are plenty of companies that are hiring full-time People that bring skill sets to the table, like you, like me, um, like other recruiters or sourcers or other talent leaders, um, you may have to work gig for a while and and just have your own insurance. Have your own insurance, or if you have a spouse that works, go on their insurance. Yep. Right. Um, so, but that was a good question. Anything else? That was kind of my main one. Like, how do you balance? balance out that while you know because you don't want to get distracted from your job search but at the same time unemployment's quite handy so <laughs> let's keep that keep that going yeah and i think the other question too i i um i've, I've different peers have asked me this question is okay well i take a contract and then a full-time job comes up now what 
And I, my answer has always been, wait and see, you know, you, you don't, don't yep. not apply because you don't know. So just, just go for it and take it as it comes. Yes. Yeah, so, um, so here's, here, here's one from, uh, from our friend Chuck. Uh, competition in my field, which is IT, he's, he's, he's at, the, at the leadership level. So from, I'd say, senior director all the way up to CIO. It's more than quadrupled since COVID. From 400 to uh, uh, 1,200 folks, isn't that tripled? Um, not trying to be a smart aleck, Chuck, uh, but he's a good friend of mine, so I have to rib him. Uh, yes, it's, it's, either way, it's grown tremendously uh, for the same jobs. What's the best, me best method to stand out and be first to market uh, in the position? I think it really is going to depend – uh, on what you're putting out there, uh, whether it be on LinkedIn or blog posts, I think having the right resume that it's aligned with the uh, uh, the the position that you're applying for, having a referral at the company, having a first connection that you really do know, not one of those first connections. Yeah. Of, I met you. I met you online at a job fair, or I met you online on a networking group, but I don't know you that well. But someone you really, really, really know or someone that can get you introduced to that company, that's going to get you first to market. Um, so I think a, a presence on LinkedIn, being referred into the organization, mm -hmm. having a resume that aligns up to, uh, to the, the position you're applying for. The other thing I'll say is timing is everything. And I think you've heard me say this, um, uh, everyone, that... You want to be able to set up your set up job alerts and make sure you have those job alerts ready to go so that when you get alerted, you're applying as soon as they're posted. So I really think it's important to apply with the apply to positions within the first um, first 24 to 48 hours. After that, it's uh, it's going to be really it's going to be really uh, tough because then people will see it and then they'll pounce on it. Right, because most people are just looking at the first twenty to uh, uh, the first the first twenty five to fifty resumes. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. So that is uh, that that that's super important. Chuck, you made a comment. Start at one. Don't know what that means. Uh, I don't know if that's in reference to the quadruple, uh, but um, but we'll just we'll just pretend it is. So. Um, so, but that would be the answer. Fanchen, do you have anything else to add to that? No, I'm, I'm pretty good. I figure once you and I start talking, we'll we'll delve into that a little bit further. All right. So, hey, everybody, thanks for thanks for tuning in. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, to watch the show on LinkedIn, Periscope, my YouTube channel, uh, and on, of course, Facebook. Um, so, if you're actually needing help. Uh, uh, with your job search, I've launched a three-part webinar series that has active registration going on. If you are interested in doing it, just send me a comment uh, on your uh, on my uh, in my direct message saying I'm in. Uh, it'll be a three-part webinar series starting next uh, Wednesday, June 30th, and each week on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, we're going to. Uh, for the next three weeks, we're going to offer the same three topics, but we're going to mix each week up a little bit at different times to cover the coasts. So definitely go check out. I just posted about it. Uh, but if you're interested, you can comment here to say I'm in and uh, uh, definitely uh, would love to have you be a part of that. And um, Van Chun, you've been an amazing guest. I am so excited for us to finally have our one-on-one tomorrow and get things going. And uh, my, my kudos to Jed Gifford for bringing us together. Um, I know we met at an ATD function probably back in August or September of last year, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, you've been an amazing person to get to know. And I'm just uh, super excited to have you as a client. And, if you're if you're interested in becoming a client, um, another shameless plug. Sorry, uh, just reach out to me and uh, or reach out to Fan Show and she'll tell you how great I am. Uh, give her a few weeks and then she'll she'll brag about. There me. you go. So Absolutely, hundred percent. Uh, but anyway, Fan Show, thanks so much for being a part of the show today. I know you're super busy. Uh, recruiters, reach out to Fan Show Henneberger. 
she's going to be able to help you uh, with your uh, internal communications and learning development needs. So all my recruiting friends watching, reach out to her, connect with her. Uh, everybody stay inside, stay safe, wear a mask if you're going out, enjoy the weather, and we'll catch you next week on the uh, Job Seeker Journeys, a me edition and the U.S. version. We've got a two for next Wednesday, so stay tuned. All right. Well, thank All you. Right. I appreciate it. All right. Take care, and we'll talk soon. Bye. Thank you. All right.